Hi guys and welcome to another 7 minute lecture. We are looking at current affairs today since something important happened. The Tunisian president, Kaye Saeed, has sacked the prime minister and suspended Tunisian parliament. There are a couple of interesting things here, so I thought it will be worth discussing. Firstly, we all know that on the surface, this is a blatantly anti-democratic move, right? So, usually, when the president of a country just dismisses the prime minister and tells parliament to go home, it's certainly a dangerous move for the democratic fabric of any country. And in fact, when this happened, the Tunisian parliament did appeal to the public to take to the streets and protest against this. They said, look, this is a coup. It's a takeover, uh, takeover of power and a subversion of our institutions. Go out and protest. That's what they said. What's happened, though, is very different. What we are actually seeing on the ground, ironically, are scenes of the people celebrating out on the streets, dancing, singing, and sort of just enjoying the sacking of the prime minister and parliament. They were even bursting firecrackers and singing the national anthem and stuff. It was like some kind of large festival. The people seem to be saying, look, we're taking back the country. We don't want these people. And the president was right in dismissing them. So what exactly is the cause of all this? The crux of the matter seems to be, as with everywhere else, the economic fallout of COVID-19. The lockdowns haven't worked and the economic situation has gotten worse and worse. So the people are stuck between rising COVID cases on one side and a worsening economy on the other. We've seen some of the highest death rates in the world coming out of Tunisia. This is happening in many countries. We looked at South Africa a week ago, Haiti a week before that. This is along similar lines as well, where the people have nowhere to go but out on the streets. In fact, it's not like the president just woke up this morning and decided to do this out of the blue. Over the last few days, there have been heavy protests by the public demanding that parliament resigns. And this is a direct response to that. There are some major allegations of corruption against the Tunisian parliament as well. So what this move by the president does is it also removes the legal immunity that parliamentarians typically enjoy. The suspension is supposed to last only for 30 days, but in that space, MPs can be arrested and prosecuted. There are already rumors that one member of parliament has been arrested. So things are happening pretty quickly. And the people seem to believe that the entirety of the parliament is irredeemably corrupt. So they don't really care what happens to them these days. It's significant for us to remember here that the famous Arab Spring, which was hailed around the world as a great step forward for democracy, was exactly 10 years ago. And Tunisia was the catalyst for that. It was the 2011 revolution in Tunisia that really spread like wildfire all over the Middle East or West Asia and became a regional movement. But even 10 years on, the actual lives of Tunisians hasn't really improved. In fact, I was watching some of the international news coverage of the protests and a lot of people were saying, look, I was there a decade ago in 2011 protesting for jobs and freedom. And here I am 10 years later still protesting for jobs and freedom. There have been nine different governments in Tunisia over the last 10 years since the Arab Spring, the revolution. I repeat, nine different governments in just 10 years. Think about that. So even though Tunisia is hailed as one of the success stories, perhaps even the only success story of the Arab Spring, that illusion seems to be crumbling now. So the present crisis is not just an indictment of the Tunisian government. In some ways, it's the last bit of irrefutable evidence that the Arab Spring itself was a complete failure. We are now getting reports of clashes between supporters of the prime minister and supporters of the president. Although it does seem like public opinion is strongly in favor of what the president did. A new prime minister has to be appointed soon. But in terms of the procedure that needs to be implemented, the protocol that needs to be followed and stuff like that, there's absolutely no clarity on what needs to be done next. The president has invoked something called Article 80 of the Tunisian constitution to do this. And what's interesting is that under this Article 80, you need to resolve things through a constitutional court. But Tunisia doesn't have 
a constitutional court. So there is no legal mechanism to challenge the president's decision. They've been trying to create a constitutional court since 2014, ever since the new constitution was created. But disagreements in parliament and among political decision makers have once again delayed this. So while the people might be celebrating now, this might turn out to be an actual coup, who knows, which is what the prime minister claims it is, because the president now has all the power and there is no check and balance system to keep him under control. The president himself is a constitutional lawyer and even taught constitutional law for many, many years. So he probably has a million arguments he can just pull out of his pocket to justify what he's doing legally. He has assured everybody that this is just temporary and that he will appoint a new prime minister. But as I said, there's very little that can be done if the supposedly temporary move turns out to be not so temporary. So overall, all we can expect in the coming weeks is even more turmoil. This is probably the biggest test of Tunisian democracy. Will all this turn into something that ushers in a new era of stability and peace for the country? Or will it really turn out to have been a constitutional coup and a pathway into some kind of long-term dictatorship? As I've said on this channel before, only time will tell. If you like content like this, please don't forget to share and subscribe. Thank you, take care and I'll see you soon.